again. Here I am to finish discussing module one of exploring creation with chemistry. And before I go on, I'll also just show you real quickly the text I'm using is this, the second edition. In my last, last video, I got up to about page 23, so we're going to continue on from there, where it talks a little bit about scientific notation and why that is important and how it relates to significant figures. So that sounds like a fun discussion, doesn't it? Let's get right into it. Scientific notation, I'm sure you guys are uh, familiar with. Hopefully you feel very confident in it. Uh, scientific notation would be a number like 2.0 times 10 to the 22nd. And I just erased my board with something wet so it has to have a little bit of time to dry here a minute. Dry off. Okay, so this would actually mean two, and instead of having the decimal point here, we're gonna move it over how many times? That's right, 22 times. So this is one, two, three, four, five. And each time I make one of these little curves, I'm imagining a zero here. I'm gonna go back and fill in my zeros later, okay? But I'm moving the decimal over from here to here. One time, two times, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 times. So the decimal place would be right there and then to actually write the number out, we have to fill in all the zeros. So obviously we use scientific notation because if we didn't, we'd be writing all of these numbers and digits and it would take a very long time to get anything done. So we rely on scientific notation. Okay, and we can also have it with a negative number like 6.0 times 10 to the negative fourth, which would mean instead of moving the decimal places four places to the right, because it's negative, we're moving it one, two, three, four places to the left. So it would actually be 0 0.0006. Now, the way that we're gonna use this in chemistry a lot is making sure that we have the correct number of significant figures in our answer. So if we have a calculation and our answer comes out to be 100 grams for an easy example, but we also know that our answer was supposed to have three significant figures, um, this number here, 100, written this way, does not have three significant figures. How many does it have? Only one. Refer back to your notes if you're wondering why. Okay, so to show this, the correct amount of precision in our answer, we're gonna need the correct amount of significant figures. So we're gonna rewrite it like this. 1.00 times 10 to the second grams. Still means 100, but this time we are showing that our precision includes these digits as well. Okay, so if you remember, zeros can be significant figures if they are the last number, the last digit in your number, and they are to the right of the decimal place, like this one. This is a significant figure because it is in between two other significant figures. So here we have written 100 grams, but with three significant figures, which was required in our make believe problem. Hope you got that. Uh, that's significant figures. We're gonna do a couple examples now from our book. Let's look at example 1.7. It is on page 26. I'll read it. A student measures the mass of a jar that is filled with sand and finds it to be 546.2075 kilograms. The jar has a note on it which says when empty, this jar has a mass of 87.61 kilograms. What's the mass of the sand that is in the jar? So we need to subtract the mass of the jar from the total mass, okay? I'm gonna bend down here. This is example 1.7. <clears throat> and we are looking for the mass of the sand in, looks like we're gonna end up in kilograms because we are given both masses in kilograms. All right, so now I'm gonna put the subtraction problem on the board. 546 points, 2075 
minus, I better include my units here, 87.61 kilograms. When we subtract that out, we get 458.5975 kilograms. Now, I trust that you guys know how to do that problem, but now we have to make sure that we have the correct number of significant figures. So if you remember, when adding or subtracting significant figures, you look to the given uh, measurement that is the least precise. This is for adding and subtracting with significant figures. This second one here is the least precise because it only measures to the 100th decimal place. So our answer has to only be that precise as well. So our answer needs to end in the hundredth decimal place. So as you can see, because the seven um, here is above five, it's a seven, we need to round up. So our answer would actually be 458.60 kilograms. Our answer would end in the hundredth decimal place because this measurement was the least precise and only measured to the hundredth decimal place. So that is an example with adding and subtracting and significant figures. Now we're gonna do one with multiplying and dividing because the rule is a little different. Wipe this off, whoops. Wipe it off, give it a chance to dry. Make sure I didn't do any damage down here when it drops my brown, my brown marker. All right, let's read the next example also part of example 1.7. A person runs 3.012 miles in 0 0.430 hours. What is the person's average speed? Okay, speed equals the uh, distance run divided by the time. Distance divided by time. Okay, so in this problem, we are looking at 3.012 miles, 3.012 miles divided by the time it took to run those three miles. 0 0.430 hours, okay? So we divide that out in our calculators and we get 7.4. 00456-1163. Sorry, I'm going to start writing a little bit small right there. And our units would be miles per hour. Miles per hour. Okay? So, is that the answer? Well, if you wrote this down on a test, I would give you one point for getting almost the right answer but you would not get your point for having the correct number of significant figures. When multiplying or dividing with significant figures, we have to look at the measurement that has the least number of significant figures. This time we're not looking at what decimal place the precision falls to, but we're looking at how many significant figures. So in our distance here, how many do we have? Three is one, zero is one, one is one, and two is one. So here we have four significant figures, and in our time, 0 0.430, this zero is not a significant figure because it is to the left of the decimal place. Four is a significant figure, three is a significant figure. This zero is a significant figure because it is to the right of the decimal place and it is the last digit in the number. So our time here has three significant figures. So the least, the measurement with the least significant figures was time with three, which means that our answer can only have three significant figures. So over here, we are going to count out one, two, three significant figures. The four does not round up this zero right here. So the answer ends up being 7.00 miles per hour. Remember these two zeros are significant figures. If you forgot why, review your rules that I gave you last time.